As I crossed the threshold from elementary to middle and high schools, boyhood fantasies blended into adolescent and teenage ones. Suddenly I developed superhuman x-ray vision and could see right through the gymnasium wall into the girls' locker room. At home, in front of my bedroom mirror, I was a long-haired rock star, breathing fire at thousands of screaming fans like Gene Simmons and Kiss. I'm dating myself here. <laughs> On Saturday nights at the Lucky Twin Drive-In, my fellow carousers and I, fueled by several bottles of piss-warm Rolling Rock beer, would climb up the back of the 100-foot drive-in screen until we reached the top. Up there, wind in our ears and stars in our hair, provoking honks and high beams from the sea of cars below, we were giants, screaming along with Jamie Lee Curtis and Halloween, or catching those gnarly waves, dude, with Sean Penn in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Looking back, it's no big shock that I ended up an actor in Hollywood. I've been blessed with the curse of the Peter Pan syndrome. I never wanted to grow up. Actually, who does? So how else in my adult life could I still be Batman? A white knight in shining armor, a blood-sucking vampire, a rock star, invisible man, flying boy, up on a drive-in screen and get paid for it. I'm still working toward and hoping for the superhuman x-ray vision powers. <laughs> Actors are dreamers, dreaming big, as we row ever onward toward our hopeful destinations, dreaming of signing with an agent someday, of joining the union and becoming professional, quitting our day jobs, writing actor on the occupation section of our tax forms, acting in a film, being up on the big screen, a bit role, a meaty scene, a supporting role, a starring role, recognition, an Oscar nomination, an Oscar, or two, or three, and on and on. The pinnacle of the actor dream ladder for me has always been to eventually act with my heroes and be considered a peer among them. Marry that with a killer role in a killer film directed by a killer director, and you've got the recipe for one hell of a dream dish. After 13 years of row, row, rowing my boat down the hopeful stream of up and down acting dreams, a big beautiful rainbow trout called the Green Mile jumped out of the water and onto my lap. Reading Frank Darabont's screenplay adaptation of Stephen King's novel moved me to tears. The story, the characters, the images and words leapt right off the pages and into my heart. It's not often that a script will do that. In fact, I dare say, The Green Mile was the best dang script to cross my path in the entirety of my career to date. Apparently, I wasn't the only one it was grabbing. I was to find out later that Hollywood at large was deeming it the current hottest project around. Agents and managers were beating down doors and on their knees begging to get their clients in the pool. Once Tom Hanks became attached, forget it. The project went from hot to scalding. Everybody wanted in. I would have given my left arm to play a walk-on part. The chance of playing the juicy role of Percy Wetmore was, well, a dream. One of my favorite inspirational quotes is from Richard Bach's Illusions 